Okay, this tutorial is going to run through the filters that are available in 3D Combine 6. Filters are the basic image editing tools that are available. Um, they appear on the right hand side here. Um, and as you see, if you hover over one, you'll get a little tool tip. And there'll also be something in the status bar to give you a bit more information about what is going on. So in this instance, double vertically, I can see doubles the height of both images. Uh, you get, uh, depending on the size of the window, you may get a subset of the available filters. If you click on this little arrow here, you get the complete set for that toolbar. Uh, and the toolbars are along the top here, so as I click on a different toolbar, I get a different set of filters. If you want to, you can also drag this bar uh, and put it elsewhere. So for example, uh, you could put it on the top underneath the other toolbar, and that may help you to see all the filters in one go. Uh, I'm going to leave it on the right hand side in its default location. Um, I'll run through the toolbars one at a time. I won't cover the depth tool uh, as that's a bit more involved and I'll cover that in a separate tutorial. Okay, so I've got my dolphins loaded up here. Um, so the first filter doubles the image vertically. Uh, the second one halves them vertically. Um, this one swaps the left and the right image. Uh, this one applies a color filter. So if I want to um, maybe remove one of the color channels, perhaps because I'm dealing with an anaglyph image, or I just want to change the color content of an image, I can do it here. So if I click on it, it gives me some instructions. So I start off with the left image and I'm entering the red offset. So zero does nothing and 255 will remove that channel completely. So I'm gonna try and get rid of the blue channel from the left image. So I'll leave the red and the green at zero and I'll put 255 for the blue channel. And then for the right image, I'll leave all three channels alone. And as you can see, I'm left with a green image on the left hand side. Um, all these filters, by the way, appear in the filter list here. So um, if I want to, I can I can clear all the filters, I can see the history, uh, and I can also uh, remove one filter going backwards. So it'll, it'll regenerate the images. Just be aware that as this filter list gets long, if you start to want to undo or swap out uh, a filter, it'll take time. So I'll clear my filter list and go back to my original images. Uh, get saturation. So this just uh, pulls the, uh, the color information out of the image. So it shows you how colorful each picture pixel is. Um, and it can be useful image segmentation. So as you can see here, it separated the dolphin from the background quite nicely. Um, and if I quickly just go to the depth image, depth uh, toolbar and click on invert, um, you can see I've got something that looks like quite a nice uh, depth map actually, uh, where the dolphin is lighter than the surroundings. And that'd be a very good po po point to start with for a depth map image. Uh, okay, going back to the process uh, toolbar. So I can flip the images up and down um, I can um, uh, smooth the images, so this will get rid of any grain in the image. Um, you probably won't see much in this one because it's quite a high resolution image. Um, yeah, it's, it's almost 2000 pixels wide um, and it's a fixed size filter. Um, if I jump ahead quickly to the tweak toolbar uh, and I resize this to a much smaller image, say 400 by 300, uh, and then I go back and apply the smoothing filter, you can see now that, it, uh, that it's blurred the image, it's, it's smoothed out any grain in it. Um, okay, uh, I can mirror the images left and right. I can convert them to grayscale. Uh, and then I've got these three alpha tools here. So alpha is a transparency in the image. So uh, 3D Combine supports uh, transparent images. So if I just, um, in the left hand here, uh, open a transparent image, um, you can see that the, the white dotted region, which is kind of the canvas, is showing through the image in this case, because this whole area is transparent. Um, if, if I want to see the transparency, I can use the display alpha to do so. And now you can see, I can see that that bit is entirely transparent. Um, and it could be a shade of gray to indicate partial transparency. Um, I can remove that if I want to, if I just want to deal with solid images. Uh, and now you can see that region of the image, the transparency has been lost. Um, I can also add a uh, transparency channel. Um, this won't really do anything to the images themselves, but if you say have a transparent image in one panel and not in the other, uh, it makes them both transparent, which can be a bit easier to work with. Okay. Uh, so the tweak tool by now. Um, uh, let me go back to my dolphins. So um, cardboard. So this will generate an image um, for viewing with Google Cardboard. Uh, all you need to set is the aspect ratio um, of the phone, which is the width divided by the height. Uh, in most cases, you can keep 1.8 as the default. Uh, and you can see the characteristic uh, warping of the image uh, required for cardboard. Um, and if I wanted to save that to view on a phone, I'd just save that now as a parallel image. Um, so 
align horizontal. So this allows me to shift um, the dolphins in and out of the image. So it moves moves the image back into the screen or out of the screen. So it tells you which way it goes. So if I select 100 now, um, it'll move the uh, image out of the screen. Uh, and I can see that by previewing it as a color anaglyph. So if you can see the, uh, the orientation between the left and the right image there, where the blue is on the right, and if you've got some anaglyph glasses, you'll, you can have a look and you'll see it coming out of the screen. If I undo that filter, you see it switch round, which is telling me that the dolphin's moved back into the screen. Um, I can rotate the left image. So if I've taken the 3D image with a 2D camera, so I've done the left eye and then the right eye, um, I can just rotate. And may maybe I got the camera out slightly. I can manually rotate one image with respect to the other. Um, I'm going to jump ahead of here again a little bit. A lot of these options are available in the automatic uh, toolkit as well. So this is where the, the uh, program will automatically determine the correct rotation. So now that I've rotate, rotated these two out of alignment, I can actually use the automatic function to illustrate its ability to rotate them back into alignment. And there you go, you see it's rotated both images so they line up again. And it's done that entirely automatically. Okay. Um, I can resize the images as I've shown you. Um, I can use this convergence tool, which is, it, it's a way of moving images in and out of the screen, and it applies a warp on top of that, um, which can sometimes help it to be a bit more natural. Um, so it's a very similar effect to before. Um, if, I, if I use a very large value of this, so I don't know, 10, you can see the warp that it's applying. Uh, so you don't want to, you, you only want to use this really for just fine tuning your images. Um, align vertically, so again, if the left and the right images are out of alignment, um, I can adjust it here, so I've moved them uh, out of alignment. Uh, and as with the rotate function, there's an automatic vertical alignment function as well, which I can use to put them back how they were. Um, I can crop the images, so if I want to crop uh, 100 pixels off the left hand side, for example, I can do. Um, let me, sorry, my filters are still applied here. So let me do that again. So I'm just going to crop 100 pixels off the left and right images. Uh, and as you can see, it's cropped both images and kept them in alignment. So very similar to a traditional crop tool, um, but it, it applies it to the 3D image. Uh, I can pad the image and I can smart pad the image. Um, these are very similar, so they'll add black bars to give the image a fixed aspect ratio. Uh, the difference is um, smart pad will, um, will resize as best it can first. So as an example of that, if I so let's say I want these pictures to be 2000 by 1800 pixels. If I enter that into SmartPad, it will resize it and then it will it will fill any remaining pixels with, uh, with black. Um, if I use just standard pad instead, um, it will create it will create black borders uh, all the way around the image. Um, this gives me an opportunity to demonstrate another tool from the automatic toolbar. Uh, which is um, crop borders. So this will automatically remove any black borders from an image. And there you go, just at the top and bottom line. So you can see it's removed the top and bottom images, uh, but not the, not the left and right ones. Um, so gamma, um, this lets me change the brightness of an image. So um, I'll show these a bit more, a bit later on in the detail, but uh, when, I, when I show the uh, adjust toolbar, but you can select the darkest col uh, color to keep. Uh, and if I bring that up, it will, it will pull the whole image down and make it darker. Um, and I can, I can enter a gamma factor, so 1.5 would make it brighter. So there, there you can see that being applied. As I say, I'll come back to that in a second. Um, uh, and I can scale the image as well. So um, let's say I want to make them 50% of the size. I enter 50 in here and there half the size. As you can see, they've, they've now reduced. Okay, uh, so the automatic toolbar. So I've shown a few of these already. Um, match will match the colors in the left and right image. So if for some reason you've, you've ended up with them being a bit uh, a bit off, maybe the camera changed its white balance while you were taking the two images, uh, this will match them. Um, these are already pretty well matched, so it doesn't do a lot. Uh, likewise with the brightness, so if it's changed the exposure slightly from the left to the right image, that will automatically correct for it here. Um, I'll come back to repair colonoglyph in a second. Um, find edges, so uh, this this just finds any edges of the image. Um, so as you can see where there's, a, where there's any hard borders or lines in the image, uh, it will find them. Um, I'm just going to open 
back my transparent image here just because I think that's a slightly better illustration. Um, so you can see now where it's found uh, found edges along the, uh, the features in the image. Uh, okay, let me go back to my dolphins uh, and find brightest. So um, this one just uh, overlays the brightest parts of the left and right image on onto the left image. Um, for the other two, I'm going to open an anaglyph image. So I've got this Paris uh, anaglyph. So I could open it as a grey anaglyph, um, which would give me um, the left and right images, but everything grey. I can open it as a colour anaglyph. Now that retains the colour information, but as you can see, um, it's distorted. So the right hand image has the um, the blue channel, and the left image has the red channel, uh, which isn't very nice. It means if I try and view this now with um, a proper stereo display, I'll still get the anaglyph distortion. So repair ana color anaglyphs um, basically analyzes the two images, combines the uh, the color information, and returns two color full color images um, for viewing. So you give it a second. There you go. So you see I now have two full color images on the uh, left and right images, and I can see the yellow of the building coming out. Um, this brings me on to uh, another function. So um, we've got this de-ghost. So sometimes when you've loaded an anaglyph image, um, the compression can leave artifacts. So if I if I look here, you may just be able to see. In fact, let me let me try opening it as a a grey anaglyph. You see that just a little bit of distortion here, um, muddling left over from the uh, anaglyph. If I click on de-ghost, um, it will remove that. Um, but the downside is that you'll lose quite a lot of the detail in the image. So it's um, it's a trade-off to be made. Okay, I'm going to go back to my dolphins. Um, so then I've got the adjust toolbar. So um, these are the same filters that are available in the other toolbars, but they give you a much nicer interface. So by illustration, if I click on adjust alignment, see I get these uh, sliders at the bottom now. And if I hover over the slider, it tells me what it does here. So this one shifts the left image horizontally. This one shifts the left image vertically. Uh, to see what's going on, you're better doing this in preview mode. So if I select uh, anaglyph, you see as I move it left and right, I get a real-time preview, uh, and I can also see. So if I wanted the, the dolphin to be right on the surface of the image, surface of the screen, sorry, I'd tweak this until it lines up like so, and I can take any offsets out uh, vertically too. Um, when I'm done, I select it again, and it prompts me to store the changes. If I say no, it will just undo them. If I say yes, it will add them to the filter menu. And you can see it's broken it out into two of the filters from the, uh, the tweak menu. Um, I can also, at this point, decide I want to keep the horizontal adjustment I made, but not the vertical one, like so. OK. Um, now, I can rotate the image. So as I could before, I can rotate the left image to try and get the images into alignment. Um, I can crop the images. So there's me crop cropping the left-hand side, and there's me cropping the right-hand side. Uh, and if I want to crop the vertical, light, um, top and bottom, I do it with a vertical crop, like so. Um, note that these can be applied repeatedly, so it tries to give a sensible uh, bar on the bottom, but if I wanted to crop right up to the bottom of the dolphin, I can't do it. Um, but what I can do is I can accept it, and I can apply the vertical crop again, and this time I can get right up to the bottom of the dolphin. And again, they've appeared in the filter list. OK, um, convergence. I can adjust the convergence as before. You see that same warping effect. Um, and I can adjust the brightness. So I said I'd show you this in a bit more detail here, because it's a bit clearer what's going on. So here's the darkest color, as it prompted me before, before, before and the brightest color. Uh, and I'm going to go back to the full color image. So as I, as I bring up the darkest one, you can see the whole image getting darker and more contrasted. Uh, and if I bring down the brightest image, what it does is it scales everything up, so the whole image becomes brighter, and if you go too far, it gets very washed out. Um, similarly, I can adjust the gamma. Um, so this is a nonlinear adjustment, but it allows you to bring things out of the darkness. So if I had some real dark areas in this image, I just wanted to brighten it all up so I could see them, uh, then I can do that. And you can see it doesn't have the, quite the same problem as the other function did with it, everything um, becoming washed out. Uh, obviously, you do get some wash out, but not to the same extent. OK, uh, that's it for these toolbars, uh, and I'll do a separate uh, tutorial on what the depth map 
uh, filters are.